Actually, I'm like officially the most banned filmmaker in the history of Thai cinema. <laughs> A last poor country. Almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave. The first day of shooting Shakespeare Must Die was a big, big day. Um, we didn't know it was going to work. You know, because this is Shakespearean. A tie. We had this one long take, and this really hard scene on the first day. We were shooting in this beautiful house, like a palace in Prakano, gorgeous garden with a courtyard. And this actor had to do one and a half page all alone. It's like a monologue. One and a half or, or two whole entire pages. Because, and his wife, he's just received news that his wife has been murdered by Macbeth. His whole household destroyed, his kids are all dead, nothing left, right, basically. Um, and he had to go through that emotions, he had to, and I was hoping that you can do it on one long take. And this guy's a doctor, normally, it's not like a professional actor. He did it in one take. And he did it so, so well. Man, he cried, he was shocked. I mean, everybody went, that moment, we knew it worked. Fuck, the Shakespeare is coming through. So I don't rehearse actors much, because I learned from Dark God, actually, that if you over-rehearse, but in that case, it's fine, because it's a silly movie. But if you over-rehearse, the energy goes out of it. I just want you to get into the pleasure of Shakespeare. Honestly, that's, I didn't make the film to insult this person, make fun of that person. You want to do that, you can just scream, shout, whatever. You don't have to adapt. Translate Shakespeare, it's not easy, man. But the music of it, the power of it, the Shakespeare is amazing. And as much as possible, we stuck very close to it. And uh, I could never have done Shakespeare Must Die without having, you know, have the Dog God film school. The Dog God, I have to say, it's not like anything that you've seen before. And I couldn't make such a thing again either because when it was so innocent, it was so sincere, it was so pure. Everybody, that, not just me, everybody was so pure. So, you know, I don't know what people will think, but it's actually very Thai in its way. I mean, the, the whole satire of it, being people worshipping a dog, I mean, it's so Thai, right? It's, the humor is very Thai. I mean, it is in English mostly, but God, there are scenes in Thai. Um, there are monks in there doing funny things. Um, don't take it so seriously, I guess. When I, I make films, I want you to forget that there's like even a... I want to get in your head, okay? I love cinema because you can get inside people's head. It, you just... You can talk to the camera like this. It's like play to camera. I just tell actors, play to camera, because now the camera is that other character you're talking to, but really not at the lens, but right through to the person shooting. And beyond that, to the people watching the film. One week before Bert Gong, before we started shooting, one week, the main villain dropped out. He was a um, Malaysian um, journalist, and he looked great. He looked like a real proper guru, you know, really fantastic person. So he said, I, I, I'm worried about my visa, my work visa. That's the first person who gave me any kind of idea that this film might bring trouble. This is 1998. They dragged me to Parliament and, you know, they stick you in the middle. This 
room surrounded by men in suits. It's kind of a psychic gang rape. Doesn't matter what you say, what what reasons you, you how you ever you explain. It's just a witch hunt. It's you're evil, you're evil, you're evil, evil, evil. Tenanle, I've been banned twice. Dog God, as because it's offensive to all religions, all not just Buddhism, all religions, and Shakespeare must die is a threat against uh, you know national security, which is completely you know you found I you can't even say it. I can't even say it with a straight face because it's not doesn't sound believable. But I fought there. I did them differently. Uh, the way we fought for the, for their freedom, they both became free this year. But Dog God, um, the, we were witch hunted as well as banned. Twenty five years I had to wait for Dog God to be free, and and um, Shakespeare must die. Nearly twelve years. No one ever beat the censors, ever. They had absolute power. And for the first time, the court. There were five judges in the Supreme Court. Actually, in the first court, we had a very bad time. There was a male, you know, chair of the court, and they told me I could read a statement one time. So I read a statement. That statement talked about all our troubles. Tukon, all the filmmakers, all Thai filmmakers thought we encountered why is the you know banning is so bad for Thai cinema as a whole, for the industry, for our survival. And at the end of it, the judge went. He laughed. I just, I wrote this statement practically with the blood to my heart, man. And you laugh. Wow, we are not human to them. Winning the case, this yeah. is a miracle. I I was sure we would lose. And when we had finally at the end of last year, we suddenly said you can make a statement. So this time, I producer Manit s i w a n i c h a p u m he made the statement. He said I'm not doing that anymore. I cannot. But we saw there were three women judges, and everyone, like, had felt hopeful because they seem really, I don't know, they they seem wise and sympathetic. I could see in their eyes they're wearing masks, yeah, because COVID. But they could they look at me and they saw another human being. Wow, do you know how moving that was? I said, well, I dare to hope. And Manit, when he was reading the statement, he cried on the stand, because oh, he's a man, he's a big man with a mustache. He cried, and I'm sorry. I walked in the sun. I sat on my little desk, and I suddenly just over it overcame me, and I was sobbing my heart out. We didn't care, and you know, because I thought I would lose. When we went back again on the verdict, and then we won. To l o k a m o n g n a k a n b a b n i a We didn't scream up and down. We just we're so tired, you know. It's 12 years. I know for sure that they don't, they don't see filmmakers as people. But until the Supreme Court, Supreme Court saw that I'm a human being, Supreme Court understood that you know how much we lost. So thank you for that, man. Right? People think that people who fight like us, who fight with pens and camera. Environmental activists, um, freedom of expression activists, like we are, we have trauma, we have wounds you can't see, you know. And we, it's really important to not go bitter ever. Do not go bitter. If you go bitter, you might as well be dead because you spread poison wherever you are. If you're bitter, beauty. Oh, I have written. I've written the quote down on the wall, down in the garden, in the front. It's beauty is truth, truth beauty. That is all ye know on earth, and all ye need to know. This is this is John Keats. Okay, 
uh, a great romantic capital R poet. And for me, that's, that's my, I, that's how I see the world. Beauty is truth, truth is beauty. And that is all you know on earth. That is all you need to know on earth to function here. When you die, you're going to find out what everything is anyway, no hurry, you know? Like that palm tree over our head, this beauty, you know? Yeah, I'm a beauty junkie. <laughs> <laughs> you stop worrying. <laughs> Just do what you want to do, man. Because you can't fight people who own the world. Yeah. You can't, and, but you can't make it, maybe, they can prevent your films or your art from being shown, from existing in the world out there. But don't give up on the person that you are and the stories you want to tell. I mean, keep going, man. Even if you have to use limited resources, use that like, like, you know, adapt to it. Find things that add production values. You can, a lot of things are free. I mean, I'm quite old. Now, I mean, I'm still fit, touch wood, you can still make films. Um, but you can make films when you're alive, right? You can't make films when you're dead. This is what I'm talking about time, tick tock, tick tock. When you're dead, you can't make any more films. But your films can still be shown. So I realized I'm not going to waste a lot of energy on trying to get my film shown, maybe. If, if I'm buried alive, then the hell with that. Uh, I'm just going to keep making the next one and the next one. You have to know who you are. Just know who you are. Know who you are.